All right, everyone, so here we are. We are at the Yakima facility. And as you guys know, this is one of our new partners we've been working with for not very long. And honestly, they approached us. They wanted us to try the new fishing products out that they have, and that's what we've been doing. What have you liked so far about them? I've liked how quick and easy it is. I don't have to break my rods down. Yeah. Everything's protected. I have extra rods with me. I got extra storage for jackets and gear and waders and boots. And I mean, it's kind of no limit. It takes a lot of the designs like this, Ford Ranger sitting out front here, it's a oh, tiny it's truck, crazy, right? but adding all those accessories allows you to get more stuff on it to get out there and go fishing or hunting or camping or whatever it is. I've loved mine. I Honestly, I was pretty like, at first I didn't really want to put it on because I didn't know how it was going to look, but I think it made my Tundra look tough. Yeah. I think it makes oh, it look I, super mine's cool. Mine's the Adventure Mobile now. Yeah. It makes it look Threw cool. An so an addicted sticker on it. And exactly. It so, so far, Addicts, we've loved the products, but they reached out to us and were like, hey, you guys want to come do a tour of the building? So we thought we'd bring you guys along for the ride. So enjoy this little video. We're going to tour the Yakima building. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's go check it out. Let's check it out. <laughs> uh, Sam and the steelhead oh, trout mostly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So oh, and little Yakima kayak thing fishes here. a lot. Yeah. Got to put this on, yes. brand myself. Yeah. Garrett. Garrett, nice to meet you. Marlon. Marlon. Awesome. You guys get all checked in? Yes, yep. we did. Got our badges. Awesome. Ready, ready for the tour. This is the show. This is the showroom. Yeah, so we'll have this have, hour. So does this have every product that you guys make in here? No. no. I, didn't, I didn't think so because I was like, it seems like you guys make a lot yeah, more. Yeah, no, we make a lot of products, but we'll display things up here for like sales meetings or Customers are going to come in like big accounts. We'll we'll set this up to display certain products. Okay. Um, we'll also try out things for in-store displays. So this is these are some of the pieces that we can give to retailers to put in their store to make it, you know, make the brand come alive in the store. And Yakima is mainly making stuff for adventure style, like biking, camping. Yeah. So all the products are geared yeah. toward that, like outdoor lifestyle. Yep. Cool. Yeah, like camp, yeah. surf. I'm seeing all kinds of. Which is why they're coming into fishing. Yeah. yeah. And well, what, what kind of pulled you guys towards that? You said it was more off of the basis of like who works here, correct? And like the culture within Yakima racks in itself. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was started 40 years ago uh, in Yakima, Washington. Mm -hmm. and, and it was really built around um, the ladder racks that they use to carry ladders in the orchards in Yakima, right. Washington. It's all the apple orchards out there. And two outdoor enthusiasts, like paddlers, whitewater paddlers, saw that company and decided to to buy it and say, we can use those racks to carry our kayaks. Right. You know, or our canoes. Design. So, yeah. yeah, and so that from there, it grew into the outdoor brand that it is today. They added bikes, bike racks, and all the different types of canoes and kayaks yeah. and skis and all those things. What was the inspiration? That's cool. Yeah, what was the inspiration behind the, the fishing part? So more recently, you know, we always have done kayaking, um, but really the shift and the growth in kayaking towards kayak fishing mm -hmm. was the prompt, right? Right. We started making uh, trailers to carry kayaks and bikes and all the other gear that you want and realized that, wow, yeah, our, our consumers, a lot of them fish. Why haven't we made, we make racks for bikes and skis. <laughs> a fishing rod is just a different type of gear, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a surfboard or a ski, right? It's, it's a fishing rod. Yeah, right? it's different. Well, what else you got to show us? Um, well, this is new, the road shower. So we just made an acquisition hey, last week. I saw what I gave Yeah, acquisition last week. We, we bought that company. Um, we we're bringing the, the road shower product into our product line, which really, it's, it's super cool because it's, um, people have used it for a number of years as a way to have a shower when they're outdoor camping, you know, because uh, it can be heated by the sun and have pressurized water. You can put the, you know, the hose with the spray nozzle or a shower attachment on, um, but that's you can crazy. also use that to spray off your kayak. You can spray off your mountain bike. Well, you I can... instantly thought like spraying off your weight and your weight. Totally, is... totally, right? So it's, it's just very complimentary to all the the categories, the activities that it's are. It's funny that about. you say this, because we just did a video with one of our buddies, his name's Mav, and he came out and he has a homemade, like built oh, yeah. one of these things. He made out of like a PVC yeah. pipe. and So we were on the beach, like using it to spray off all of our waders because you don't want salt on your waders. Yeah. 
How many of you guys are gonna go buy one of those road showers? Because I instantly was like, yep, I'm emailing them. I need one for my truck. That'd be so perfect for spraying off waiters and stuff. Die. It's pretty rainy right now, so not many people are riding the bike to work, but in the spring and summer when a lot of people are biking. This, this is this just literally the dedicated bike room. Yeah, you park your bike there when you ride in from work. We got a locker room and like you got a whole shop back here so you can maintain your bikes. Huh. Pretty fun. It's a good way to keep you at work. Yep. That's a good work <laughs> perk, like, especially if you like the bike. Yeah. That's super cool. Yep. So you can see here we have a, a, a test a bay here in our in our shop where you you have all the clips and all the parts that you would need to fit our racks to any vehicle. So we have a team that goes out every every week of the year really, but to keep up, they go to all the dealerships, yeah, car dealerships. Yeah. As soon as the cars hit the lot, they go out and check our parts on those vehicles, make sure that it's what so we know what to tell the customers well i could only it. imagine with every model that comes out like you said monthly i mean each yeah. manufacturer comes out with cars at different times yeah they, they just that got sounds back like from, a nightmare <laughs> yeah they just got back from the la auto show where yeah. they kind of get a sneak peek okay like okay well it looks like this one's new this one's new these ones are not right because they were really easy to put on but of course if you're <coughs> I was centimeters off on how your easy parts, it was. Yeah. yeah if you're centimeters off on your parts though they're not going to fit you know, and it was it was nice how it was all you know the diagnostic was laid out, and you could easily just have the right parts no matter what. I want the job going to cut all these roofs off. Yeah, so you can see sometimes it requires that we do more testing, and we have a whole pile of vehicle roofs. We also have truck beds over here for our truck racks, where we'll put new racks onto those and put it through our test loop. So we have a test truck that's out right now. It's a real world. Uh, test loop where it, it drives on the freeway, back roads, goes up into the Tillamook State Forest, goes on the gravel roads and hits all the potholes they can find and right. really like really beats it down <laughs> to find out if it's gonna withstand right. the abuse that real people are gonna use. Right. Especially so. us. Exactly. Yeah. You guys know how I drive my truck. <laughs> yeah, especially Marlon. He'll be the new test driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Attic, so this is a product that Jordan, I think you're gonna throw on your, one of your rigs yep, really eventually. Soon. So talk to us a little bit about the inspiration behind this and why you guys designed this, because it's kind of a crazy looking contraption up here. Yeah, it's it's pretty big, but it's gotta carry big, long fishing rods. So yeah. this is the double haul. Um, we saw a lot of people making their own products to carry their fly rods on, on top of their rig. Um, lots of times, I mean, you guys know you might be moving from spot to spot. Yeah. And so it's really convenient to leave everything rigged up. With a 13 foot rod. Right, yeah. right. And carry it <laughs> set, not take it, break it down or anything right. to, your, to your new spot. And so this carrier allows you to do that. Or if you want to set up the night before or the morning before. Be pre-rigged and ready. Be ready so that right when you get to your spot, you can pull your gear out and go. And yeah. it locks, I see. Yep, so it locks. You can see the, the door opens up from the back here. And you got four compartments there, four individual tubes where the rods got a little fly inside in there. there. Yeah, I haven't got one left there. <laughs> so these are felt lined. The reels turn sideways and, and rest right inside there. And then inside the tubes is a plastic liner. So it protects the the rod itself inside. All the eyes and everything, yeah. Yeah, and then you've also got these rubber bumpers that you can put on the rod itself to give it extra protection. That's really cool. I didn't know those came from. And what is the full length of that? What's the longest rod it can fit? Carry a 10 foot rod. Okay. Yep. But so on really a. You can just break them down, slide them in. Yeah, if you have a spay rod that's longer than, longer than 10, right? right? At 12 or 13, something like that. You break it in half fold it over and leave it strung up right, right. and slip it inside. Yeah, it works yeah. just as good. Yeah. I've broken so many fly rods, breaking them in half and putting them in the truck like another fly rod, just yeah. being lazy and it's a lot of money you're messing with when, no, you're, when sure. you're playing with those rods, so. Yep, and once it's in here, it's all locked up and secure. Oh, that's awesome. Lock it with the keys, it's locked to your rack as well. We got to have it here on our truck rack, but you can put it on any, any roof rack any system. Any roof rack system, yep, yeah. On top of a shell, SUV, whatever you want. Yeah, cool. mine'll be so, going on soon. Yes, and all you fly fishermen out there, make sure you guys check this thing out. It's pretty slick. We'll put some links down below so you guys can check these products out if you guys are interested in, in seeing any of them. Sweet. Cool. All right. I think it was, like, it was a little over uh, intimidating in the box. It's like, Jesus yeah. Christ. It's definitely. Oh, yes. 
All right, Alex, so we're here kind of touring the factory like we told you, and we thought it'd be a good opportunity just to talk to some of the experts about why they created some of these products. And this is another one that I'm really intrigued about. Jordan's been using this on his truck, and he's been using it basically to like store like wading boots, waders, you know, his rods broken down. Because obviously most salmon and steelhead fishermen, they're using longer than eight foot rods. So talk a little bit about this product and why you guys designed it and what the inspiration was behind it. Yeah, so the, uh, the real inspiration around this was fact that we saw people stuffing their fishing rods inside their car or inside their truck or SUV and it's there's nothing worse than having tips broken off mm -hmm. just because of negligence you know just because it's up on the dashboard yep. and breaking off or catching on the fabric of your seats and then you got stuff above your head so it just seemed like there was a better way that we could do it to um, store the rods exactly yeah so you can see the shape is long and narrow so that it can carry the rods better mm -hmm. Um, but when you open it up, so it's lock, locks right there, but unlock it, open it up, and you've got these nice foam pads here so you can stick the, place the rods right here, and then hold them in place with this rubber strap. So you can place rods up here, um, there's three supports, and then you can, you know, the reels hang here and, mm -hmm. you know, not be banging against the bottom, right? So you can kind of put your stuff in there, be safe, be organized, and you know, not damage, not break Not gear. breaking tips and stuff yeah. like that. And like I was saying, Addicts, what Jordan does is he's breaking his 10 and a half or his nine foot rods. He'll put them on this side of the of the top water and then over here he'll have like a set pair of his wading boots, his waders, maybe a backpack. That's what's cool about it is it's, it, you know, it's universal. You can put whatever you want in it really. Yeah, and a lot of bass rods with this works perfect for because the, tournament limits is usually eight feet on on the bass rods so you can you can fit those full length how many full length eight foot rods will this thing fit if you want to like keep them all spaced out separately you can fit eight in these spots right here and did you, know, you use this much on your trip i use it i use it every single day i keep extra rods in there for when i'm guiding and everything because you never know in the morning taking your rods off the line catches in a tree you yank it your tip breaks off you know i need to open the Open the box, grab another one. Happened the other day we were filming, I broke one of my reels. Walked back to the truck, grab another reel out of here. I mean, it's just nice to have extra rods that weren't sitting in your front seat where somebody could take them. Absolutely. You know. Yeah, cool. Well, Addicts, this is the top water. Again, we'll be putting links to all these things down in the description below, so make sure you check them out. Okay, so now we have the other rack that I have on mine, which is... Real deal. Real deal, okay. Yep. Where was this inspired? This is kind of inspired by your your ski and snowboard rack, yeah, correct? Yeah, no, exactly. We actually saw a lot of people uh, doing this with their ski racks. Right. And we said, well, is this is this okay to do? And so we tested it. We um, certify it for use now right. with fishing rods. And this is a model specifically sized for fishing rods. That way it's not so hard to reach up and grab. You're not putting right. a bunch of skis and stuff in there. It's, it's nice. I mean, I'll use the tips of my rods and close them, and it's it's very convenient to have. Yeah. So you have up there on your rack. And, and so the way these work, they have this little sponginess here. I put the rod butt on this end, and then I put the other tip on this end. And so the rod itself is, is fairly secure. Yep. So yeah. Butt. Okay. Yep. You, I mean, you can space it anywhere you want, but yeah, it's just meant to support the rod. So when you put the rod in there, yeah, the the rubber just compresses around around the rod so however you want to do that on your roof it might be spread out more depending right. on how ro how long your rods are that you want to put in right so you can space it however you want but well, then, i'm like two on the top of them what i like is that this when it's like secured this is all like one hand operation like you yep. you push the clip and it just opens up by itself and the locking, the, the, the security of the item is what's pretty cool. Somebody was being really ambitious and took a pocket knife, they could probably get out your reels a little bit, but you're not getting the rods out of there. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, that's what's really nice. And the nice uh, convenient part about it is you can just open it up, throw the rods out there, close it, and then take off. Yeah. So it's not... Especially for road fishing, spot to spot. I use them every day. I take yeah. them on the road. And we, I put my rods in them every morning because yeah. I've gone through a lot of rods over the last few years by leaving them out of the back of the pickup or in the boat. I mean, it's just, you're never being good to them. And this is the best way I've seen. One thing I've seen a lot of comments on, and a lot of you addicts have asked this out there is like, 
dealing with like road grime and stuff all i have not experienced any of that i drove around with my rods for two weeks and they were like nothing had touched them have you experienced any like road grime like getting on the reels and rods and stuff have you had that i have mostly in the winter mm -hmm. mostly in the winter summertime no you know they all go pretty good but once they start spraying the de-icer and stuff i see a little bit but you can you can adapt to that you can put different things over your reels see i drove around with those crappie rods on the top of my truck for three weeks and they didn't look like anything had happened to them <laughs> So I, I don't know. The, I don't know, Alex. Same with the box. It's got drain holes on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So if you want to put your stuff in there and hose it down, spray off the reels and rods oh, and everything, it'll just drain out. Cool. So, well, the real deal. Check it out, guys. I just didn't even know that it, this is a Ford Ranger. Uh -huh. Yeah, the new Ranger. I had no clue this is what they looked like. Well, they don't look like this. Well, not, <laughs> not fully, but I mean, even just the like the the hood and yeah. like I didn't know that the body shape was like this. Yeah. So what is this beauty? This sexy little thing up front here. This is our Ford Ranger. Uh, we we did this build with Ford for the SEMA trade show, the aftermarket accessories right. automotive show, and it was awesome. I mean, this was a stock Ford Ranger, but now it does not even look. Now it's the it Yakima Ford Ranger. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's got all the truck racks that we make, the platform racks for the roof, and then we partnered with all these other brands to build it out. Suspension, um, tuning, winch, bumpers, all, all, all the Axe, lighting. Axe, shovel, lights. Yeah, just I everything mean, to goodness. make it. It's pretty awesome. You ain't getting stuck out there in this thing. No, no. Or actually, you probably hope you would. It's pretty cool. Fun, fun toy Trump's that we have to Tacoma. Through. And obviously Gerber. We gotta get Gerber in there. Shout out to Gerber. <laughs> Alright everybody. Well that wraps up our very intricate tour of Yakima Rat Company. Yeah. Cool super company. Stoked. Kind of born right here in the Northwest, just like all their products and uh, really nice people. Super excited to keep this relationship going. Well, it's like I was time. saying, just the culture that they have in their office and just you know, even we just met the marketing manager and it just seemed they told us literally like come take this truck and go drive it around and fish it. All right, bummer. Say, say when, we'll come grab it like tomorrow. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. If you guys want to see more of these vlog style videos, I know I've asked this a couple times in the past, make sure you drop a comment below because we're going to keep trying to let you guys more behind the scenes into this kind of stuff. And we want to bring you guys along for the ride. So thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the river. Later, guys.